Ladies on the right along. So it's happening, happening here. Came over here. What does it mean? You know, I, I grew up in a, what I guess you call a typical family. We break all the stories. And that's just a fact. And that's why everyone has a story to tell. Right along live. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a it's real a deal. deal. Ah, yes, 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 and yes. How is everybody? Welcome to Ride Along Live for today. Hope everybody's doing fine. Great. <laughs> Big up all yourself. Now, let me make sure everything is fine, guys. Give me a thumbs up. If you hear me, fine. If everything sounds fine, I want you guys to give me a quick thumbs up so we could proceed with the thing. We got a lot of information for you today, guys. A whole lot of information, a whole freaking set of information for you today. So as you come in, go ahead and share the thing and say, I share. Hey, Malene, how are you doing? Because Malene, I see you. Thank you so much. Hey, Lacey J, how are you doing? Gloria. Yeah, I, I mention you, Favor King. I mean, I'm, I, I mention you, Favor King. Specifically, you, Favor King. <laughs> Good night to everyone, guys. Again, give me an audio check. Let me know if everything is sounding good on your end. Um, before we proceed, night to you, Estelin Francis Wilkinson. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Guys, listen, today we're going to have an interesting conversation, right? Today we talk about this topic that has been on the lips, on the minds of people for many, many years. This is not a novel. People have been speaking about this for a long time. Yeah. But it seems like now they have been more focused into the, not just the decriminalization, but the legalization, the complete legalization of marijuana in the Caribbean, right? I remember a few years ago, um, we did a, a, a stream of press conference coming out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, where the Prime Minister, Ralph Gonzalez, was talking about the initial move in, you know, the legalization and speaking to the stakeholders involved. We just learned this week that St. Vincent and the Grenadines exported um, a huge um shipment of cannabis to europe so things are moving positive now the question is what does that mean to the normal man the regular man on the street what does the legalization of marijuana mean to everyone how does it impact the the everyday man and of course how does it in fact, the people who are selling or selling marijuana for the past couple of years or so, what is in it for us in the economy? We have Cam Jones and um, Kenson King, selling or selling marijuana. who's going to be joining us in a very, very short while. But before we go to Cam Jones, who we have, we have him for like about 45 minutes. I just want to take a little time real quickly, guys, uh, because earlier today I got this mail. And this mail came from Mr. Jack Russell. I don't know if you guys remember Jack Russell. He was on the program. Uh, you're right. He, he was on the program uh, uh, last week. Uh, that's the guy with the ALS. Um, so Jack sent me a mail, and he has some cash in it. So Jack sent me a mail with cash in it. And he prom I promised him that I am going to give away this money to needed, needy families, right? Pair. He's mostly concerned about kids uh, and pair and and, uh, and and young mothers. So what we're going to do is I'm tell you guys a little bit more about this. But we are going to give these monies to folks in Grenada, Carico, and Pity Martinique by way of groceries. So we're going to pick about five families and give them two hundred and fifty dollars worth of groceries. Um, we're going to whatever Jack give me, I'm going to double that, and then we're going to give that away. Uh, I can give you guys some more information on that um, during later in the program. All right? Yes. Yes. So thank you, Jack, for um, 
for for your donation and it's going to go to the cause uh that we spoke about thank you so much all right so let's get right into it guys let's get right into it mr cam jones is no stranger to ride along live in fact he's a family of the program um he is a very controversial personality or people say controversial i think that he's just a conscious individual uh the brother speak his mind sometimes people don't like it some like me i speak my mind people like it people don't like it that's how it is right but he's very very conscious in terms of um of where he sees the the country going and he speak his mind and he talk about it every time let's welcome kem jones on the program kem jones my brother how you doing sir i am fine thanks uh junior it's always a pleasure being on this most viewed uh program internationally regionally and domestically uh, it's always a pleasure being with you to discuss issues of national importance yeah, man, absolutely, absolutely. Kem, you know, as I said, later we'll be joined by Kenson King from St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, to talk about his very burning desire. But before we go on on it, Kem, what is your position on the, not just the decriminalization, but the legalization of marijuana in, the, in Grenada, well, in the Caribbean? Well, if, if folks recall uh, when Youth for Change started our public meetings, we were very clear young people forward thinking progressive and we are when we consider ourselves to be visionaries we made it very clear that cannabis needs to be legalized not just decriminalized in fact if that conversation of decriminalization was held 15 to 20 years ago then we would have welcomed that but we are in this uh, period where legalization is the way to go for Grenada. And we explain very simply, you legalize, it means the small man in the different communities will benefit because we are not talking about just a smoke, meaning, you know, you walk uh, on the streets and you're allowed to carry four spliffs. We are not talking about just that. We are talking about the economic benefits that can be derived from the legalization of cannabis not just you planting four trees in the back of your yard. We want to speak about legalize, regulate, expunge, and apologize. And let me speak some more about that. So you legalize cannabis, but you must regulate the industry so that we can get taxes, we can build roads, we can build schools, we can build clinics, we can pay salaries. And when I say we, I'm talking about government being able to meet their commitments because the government must survive. This is a multi-billion dollars industry. And when I speak about regulation, I am looking at central storage. And many people will know about cocoa and nutmeg, right? Where mm -hmm. you have central storage and we're in modern times. So it will be modernized, it will be secured, so you can actually gauge the habits, how many people are, you know, uh, harvested this amount in terms of uh, weights, in terms of, you know, the different type, right, of kush, or if we have labs set up, we can get the best type of oil, the, de the best type of beauty and skin products, and, you know, we can go on and on with a different type of product, so you regulate it, and then you expunge the criminal records of all who have been convicted for cannabis-related offenses, because to be honest with you, uh, I think arresting, charging, jailing a person for the hub uh, in itself is, is a crime against humanity and against anybody because you jailing a person for that when there are so many health benefits that can be derived from it. So you have to expunge the records and you also have to uh, give a formal apology to the Rastafarian community. They have been persecuted and prosecuted for the hub and it's a part of the religion right <laughs> they need to to be given a formal apology not just by any individual but either from the prime minister or from the governor general uh formally they must be involved in the process when you legalize they should benefit from it and and you know i always say to people decriminalization will benefit the big boys because the big boys would have to go to the minister to get a license but right but a small man they allow them to carry three or four splits 
or plant two or three uh, ganja plants behind the backyard, but the big boys will be able to export. But when you legalize the small man in Ladig, the small man in Montu, the small man in River Sali, the small man in Belisle, for example, will be able to plant and will be able to earn something from this. And, and, and really, it's a very simple format that we have been calling for consistently so because we are thinking, you know, the future. We are futuristic in our thinking. Right, right, right. Well, we were just joined by Kenson King, who is equally an activist there in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we learned that in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, they just recently exported uh, a huge shipment of cannabis to, to Europe. Kenson, welcome to the program. How are you doing, my brother? Good night, my brother. I'm good. I'm good. Um, as I told, I was on my way home, so I just, I just rushed in. I'm sorry for being late. No, no problem, no problem. Um, but what's your take, Kenson? What's your take on the topic of legalization, decriminalization of marijuana in St. Vincent and the Grenadines? And how do you think that it affects the common man on the street in St. Vincent at the moment? Well, in St. Vincent, well, let me start from, let me start from the point of when the legislation was being drafted and presented in the House. I remember there were, there's a, a retired, a retired lawyer who came out and he stood with farmers and he said, I'm standing against this piece of legislation because it is not being put in place for the small man. As a matter of fact, I can tell you, I got to look at the legislation before it was passed. And believe me, that has nothing to do with the small man or being beneficial to the small man. Now, the sad thing is, is that the government was able to use uh, another activist and some, um, sad to say, but in the purest way, ignorant um, farmers who did not understand what the legislation was about. And so they counter-protested the protesters who were protesting the passing of that piece of legislation. Fast forward to today, um, these people, they are still suffering because now, Many of the things that were put in place in the piece of legislation have not worked out for the smaller man. So now, for example, the smaller man, if he's caught with, with, with some marijuana, it is still deemed as being illegal. He's still being sent to prison. He still has to pay exorbitant fees. Now, one of the things that, that grind my gears here is the fact that you will charge a man 10 times in the court the amount for one pound of weed that you will buy it here for legally. Because here they have told the, 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 um, the planters, they have told the, the planters in the hills that, hey, bring in a weed and we'll, sell, we'll buy it from you for $50 a pound. Right? But when a man goes to, to, um, to the court, when he's caught, yeah, $500 per pound, you have some exorbitant fees. Now, the persons who are benefiting here, and this is another thing that Oaks me Jr., and I've made this point ever so often that it is so sad that in our Caribbean society and in my local society that we always have to be begging a foreigner for a job. They always come and are being put in place and, and you know, they are, they are put to own our resources and our industries. Mm -hmm. Now, the marijuana industry is one that is basically new. But our Minister of Agriculture, Sabota Caesar, I remember when he was pushing this out there, advertising the, the decriminalization and, and, and legalization of marijuana. Well, the decriminalization because it's not legal. Um, I remember him saying, you know, we have the best, St. Vincent has the best marijuana because of our soil. And St. Vincent has the best marijuana farmers because they have over 40 years in producing marijuana. But these are the same people who are not benefiting from this decriminalization of the marijuana. As a matter of fact, our Prime Minister, some years ago, referred to these same farmers as vagabonds to be exterminated. Uh -huh. You see? So now, here you have this situation where only the big boys and their cohorts are benefiting. You're hearing, um, I think it was in the first quarter or uh, half year after the passing of the legislation that, oh, they made... Um, how much and how much millions of dollars in 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 um in in marijuana 
licenses. The sad thing is, is that how many of the small men got license? Yeah. It's and to, to, to Kem's point, to Kem's point there, the fact is that there are with with a regulation of the of the of the of the of the of the of the, of the market for, for, for marijuana, for my limited vision of it, because I'm not on the on the island there, it seems to it would benefit the big corporations or the people who are or the ministers or the people who have that position. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, let, yeah. me, let me show you how unfair it is. Oh, yeah. sorry. Go, go ahead, Ken. Go ahead. Can you make a point? We'll go back to, um, to Kenson. Right. That is why, and Kenson, welcome, man. It's happy to be Thank on you, the program brother. with you. Right. And that is why I'm <laughs> saying the government is proposing to decriminalize cannabis. And they have made it clear. Well, you will be able to carry a small quantity and you will not mm -hmm. be charged. Let's say four spliffs, five spliffs. And you'll be able to plant one, two, three, four ganja plants in your backyard. But you have to go to the minister, right? Some minister to get some license it, as part of that piece of legislation that they're uh, developing to get a license. And, you know, yeah. the minister's son or the minister's son friends or the people close to them, they are the people who will get the license because they have the links, because, you know, linkology yep. is what it is yep. in, in most of those small islands. And they are the ones who will be benefiting. In fact, we have seen a number of those ministers, uh, you know, them, their children, our close friends, already start buying up lands, leasing lands in preparation for the decriminalization of cannabis. And they will benefit. They're, the big boys will, will eat up food. But the small man, the ordinary man, will not benefit. And Kenson's point is a very valuable point, uh, a very valid point in my view, where I have been saying on my talk show program, the young people, right, the, the simple people will still go to jail for possession of cannabis because when they realize the big boys getting the license, they make it all the big money, then they will mm -hmm. up to, mm -hmm. to carry a certain amount over the limit that the legislation will speak to, uh, you know, that law will speak to, and they will go to jail. We don't want that. If you legalize it, then you have a different ball game. The small man in River Sally, the small man in Grand Roy, the small man in Gorf will be able to get a half an acre or a quarter of an acre or an acre. They could form themselves into cooperatives and they will be able to plant. And what we are saying is government will benefit because we know the government will not uh, go through such a process not to benefit from a multi-billion dollar industry. We need to fix roads, we need to fix schools, we need to fix healthcare centers, we need to you know, pay staff, we need to keep the country going. We agree. And that is why we say regulate it. But when you regulate it, it's not a regulation where you're gonna be taking all and sucking all from the people. Something very simple, where you have a central storage, so you know how much people are, pro pro are producing, and there is some level of security because you know, if I make it X, Y, and Z, and the next man make it X, Y, and Z, jealousy might flow in, and they might want to come and rob, they might want to come and, you know, you don't want that. And that is why we are saying when you regulate, let's see some labs going up, no man. Let's produce oil. Let's produce soap. Let's produce clothes. Let's produce things. Not every time you have to ship your fish to Europe, ship it mm -hmm. to America. Mm -hmm. frozen. Mm -hmm. Let's produce things out of it. And that is why I'm speaking about the economic benefits that can be derived. Decriminalization speaks to smoking. And I don't care if a scholar comes to Grenada and says, well, it's not smoking. It's more than that. You telling a person they just have a right to go ahead and have two or three spliffs or a ganja plant in the back of the yard. Maybe they could make some tea out of it. But we want to create decent paying jobs from this industry. And as the young man said, Kenson said, this is a new industry for us in this region. But outside, they have been making billions of dollars out of it. Yeah, well, to, to your Only point, Kim, to your, to your point, Massachusetts marijuana tax revenue now exceed alcohol by millions. But mm -hmm. it, 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 it is bringing in massive revenue in Massachusetts, in Canada, right? Hmm. And it's outpacing the expectation. But what what happens then? What's in your vision, Ken Snow Kim? What happens then mm -hmm. to the Rastaman? What happens then 
to the person who are um are have been making whatever little economical benefits from it what happened to him then do, do he have to now compete with the government and the big entities in order to market his marijuana what what is the process your envision of what's the process of how this business is going to work with for, for the regular man yes go ahead well here's where here's where it goes and let me let me say let me say to the brother there that i i have to really applaud him on on, on the points that he just made right and before you can even get to that um junior that question that you just asked right you have to first take into play the intricacies of what are happening now because for example here in saint vincent right and the brother was just talking about you know if you just decriminalize you know you you, you might be able to only have a certain amount on you maybe for a play for uh you know for a, a, a legally smoke but the same smoke that they're telling you is illegal the, the the dispensary that they have saying that it's a medical marijuana dispensary they are selling spliffs now you and i i i brought that in to show you junior where no if you if you if you have to fully legalize marijuana and legalize the industry this is where you take the government out of it you have to take the government out of it this is where you allow private entities, like, for example, in St. Vincent, when we had the banana industry. It was the farmers who controlled that. The government didn't, didn't have anything to do with that per se. It was, it was the, the, the farmers and their, their, um, their, their um, cooperative and so forth. They were able to buy a company, a boat company. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And so with that, with the economical benefits from there, because once government is involved, you are going to stifle the private entity. Now, you mentioned mm. Canada just now. I was in Canada in 2019. And you were allowed to have, to have a sorted among the trees in a yard. And one of, but one of the things that they were complaining about in Canada was that because it's like the water down the weed so much that the, the, the people would leave the dispensary and go to the, the black market. Mm. And so that was a problem. So now this is where you have to lead. The government has to stay out of this. And the, 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 the Rastafarians, this is a part of their religion. This is a part of, of their culture. This is a part of, of their religious free um, expression. You see what I'm saying? So these people, as, as the brother said earlier when I just came in, you have to apologize to them. And you mm -hmm. have to make sure to put legislation in place to protect their constitutional right to religious freedom. Mm -hmm. You see, so 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 the the, the 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 um the financial aspect of it is where and the brother just made the point. Those higher ups, the 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 uncle of the the the, the um of those in power, the the grandfather and stepfather and, and whoever else, they are the ones presently benefiting. Listen, we really are a Caribbean community because the same set of uh, stuff that the brother just said ha is, is happening there has happened here. But mm -hmm. you're not hearing that people's records have been expunged who went to prison for marijuana. People are still in prison presently while the government and their cohorts are making millions. Yeah. Ken, I want you to jump, I want you to jump on this point months. here. I want you to jump on this point here. Keep government out of it. Keep government out of the the, the 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 marketing or just out of the business of, of marijuana. What what do you think about that? Because NDC, I know the NDC has proposed that. Right. I, I agree with that notion because I believe there are capable people within Grenada, for example, or St. Vincent, who are involved in that industry, who can actually get the markets required, who can actually aid. In other words, you you, you form some kind of either team, some body that can ensure, right? But, 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 but there must be some level of accountability. So once you have central storage again, we go back to that, you would have weight being taken. And the government could collect their taxes, but you don't want their hands involved in this at all. I want to agree with the brother, because once government gets involved, we might have blockouts like Grenlec, for example, <laughs> or we might have rat taking the marijuana, even if rat not taking it, right? So I want to agree with the brother. Uh, government has to be out of this. But I want to make a, a very important point. 
you hear people from time to time saying, well, marijuana is the cause of people having psychological or mental problems, right? <laughs> and I laugh because I know, based on research, and you can go and research it, alcohol causes more harm to the human body, to young people, to middle-aged people, than cannabis, or as we say, ganja or marijuana. Cigarette causes more harm to our people than cannabis or marijuana, and that is why I am also proposing, once you legalize, you need to ban smoking in public places. So you have designated places or uh, uh, buildings or business places, whatever you want to call it, that a person can go and they can smoke because it must be medicinal and recreational. So a person can get a license to operate a pub or a bar or some facility where it's a designated place for cannabis. You have to ban smoking in public places. In other words, the penalty for a person found in public, smoking, cannabis, cigarette, whatever, should be tough. And that's just my position. Somebody might have a different position. But I am of the view that it should be banned also. While you're legalizing, there must be some form of order. Or else you would have chaos, you would have anarchy in our society. How do you, how do you deal with the notion that says that marijuana is a stepping stone drug. So people, people might say, okay, you might start with marijuana, you might, you might want something more harder, you might go to crack, or you might move on to stronger drugs. Do you believe that it's a stepping stone drugs? And if get if it legalized and just available in on, on the regular market, um, how do you keep kids away from it? How do you keep people who are not to be smoking marijuana away from marijuana? Well, my, my brother, Again, Junior, oh. alcohol... All right. Uh, you want to go, Kenzo? You want to right? Alcohol, for example, it is legal, but it's controlled. Right. You know, children or underage people cannot just go in a shop and purchase it. In fact, if a person sells alcohol to an underage person, that person could be charged and could be sent to jail. Not only that, if you decriminalize it, people will still be allowed. Uh, to smoke it because you're actually saying to people, you are free to carry a certain gram or four spliffs or five spliffs on you and you're free to smoke it. You're free to plant two, three, four, five trees. So in other words, I am saying the argument that it's a step in, what step in stone drug or more people are going to smoke it, more young people. No, no, no. That is why you need to make sure that you do the thing properly. So you safeguard the population, the vulnerable population, from misusing it. Come on, people smoke this thing every day, right? And I am certain there are people out there who would not like to see anybody selling alcohol or uh, cigarette or uh, cannabis to underage people. What we need to do is to have somebody, some, you know, an arm of the police, an arm of or mix with civil society or whatever, to be able to monitor, to be able to, 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 to be the kind of eyes and ears to make sure that this thing doesn't go to children or underage people. But come on, we can't stop people from smoking cannabis. We just mm -hmm. need to have some kind of policy, have some kind of regulation, have something in place to protect uh, the vulnerable people. Yeah, Kenson, you were, you were going to say? Yeah, I'm going to say um, just two things. Legislation, education. And the, the brother has explained it perfectly. You legislate, you legislate what the same way that, as, as he said, you know, um, an underage child can't go, to, can't go to a shop or a supermarket and buy cigarettes and, 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 um, and liquor. And the education part comes in where you have to educate the people, open their eyes as to why. Because, for example, you go to America, Junior, you, um, both of you, should, you would know this. You go to America, you go to Canada. There is no way in God's good earth that you are going to see an underage person or someone who even that, that, that cashier or anyone is going to think, mm -mm, you, you, you don't look 21. You have to present your ID. And there's actually no one there 
on their backs. There's not an arm of the police. There's not anyone there on their backs, but it's just the norm. Because mm -hmm. they have been educated as such, and so it's just what comes out. You see? So we have to force legislate these things and then educate the masses and help them, you know. So you have to keep the radio one off. You have to do your education going, let it become a norm, let it become something entrenched in the head. Because right now in the Caribbean, you cannot, you will not see even a, a, a village shopkeeper selling, selling um, um, liquor to, to someone who is underage. Right. Right, right. Let me, let me on a program note, guys. We're speaking here with Kem Jones and Kenson King. We're talking about the legalization and the decriminalization of marijuana. We heard this last week that the NDC um, new leader, uh, Deacon Mitchell, put put out uh, a post that spoke to the the position of the party in terms of the, the full legalization. But Kem, what are the prerequisites? What are some of the things that need to be done before we even start to talk about this thing? I mean, a government can just come in power today and say, you know what, tomorrow we legalize in marijuana. Are there prerequisites? But you see, we need to understand a party who wants to form the government need to first prepare, put plans in place, because you have to start governing from day one. So if your policy position is to legalize, regulate, expunge apologize you need to before even coming into government put your team together to come up with the structure to come up with you know the prerequisites what would what would be in place what you think must be in place consultation if you have to engage in that you know all the steps because you cannot say to the general public you're going to legalize this thing and when you come in there say well we're still trying to put things in place to legalize it. That, that, that just is a no-no. We're in a different dispensation. People want a more pragmatic government and the party. So now the NDC is in opposition, meaning they want to get into government. They have put forward a different policy when compared to the party in power. The party in power is saying, we're going to decriminalize. So the big boy is going to benefit, right? But the NDC is saying, we're going to legalize. The small man will benefit. We're going to regulate. We're going to expunge, clean your records. You don't have to go in front of some committee and beg for your records to be clean. Decriminalizing, the government or the incumbent, the party in power is saying, well, we have a board in place already trying to clean the records. You have to come there and appeal and beg and plead and plead and plead. So it's two different positions, which, which is great. But you need to be prepared even before going into government. So I expect within the first 100 days of the NDC, or let's give them, let's be conservative, to say within the first 200 days, we should see things rolling, legalization, and you know making sure that the structure's in place, you regulate the small man, you know, stop financing, support, Education, as the brother was speaking about, educate the population. Uh, we need to see land setting up, right? We need to see things working and going. This thing's not hard to set up. We have mm -hmm. Grenadians. We have Vincentians. We have Jamaicans who are in this industry, either in St. Vincent or in Canada, in the United States, in Europe. So we can tap in to our people. You know, I hate when I see our cocoa, nutmeg, fish, everything moving overseas in the raw state and then it coming back on the shelves uh, because we have to buy hot chocolate, our same cocoa, right? And the fish, tuna, mackerel, whatever you want to call it, all the little canned thing, sardine, whatever you want to call it, it comes back here to us. We could add value to this. This is an industry that we just started off in a big way. We need to do it properly so that our people will benefit because we are in a different epoch, a different time when our people are more educated, more progressive, more forward thinking. We need to involve our people, tap into the kind of knowledge and experience and so on of our people domestically and regionally and even internationally. I, I mean, would 
I like, I like the fact. Okay, go ahead. A brother, mm -hmm. a brother who went to the United States of America. A friend mm -hmm. was giving me a little joke. Well, which is serious, huh? <laughs> right? And he was saying the brother married to someone who was studying here, went to the United States of America, fall into that industry, and they are so impressed with that brother, his attitude to work, and his dedication to getting the best grade, and you know, and to to adding value to the thing. Now the brother is a senior man in, the, in that particular industry, making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Amazingly. In fact, he said, well, the brother sent back money already to buy land to build house. You know, in other words, that is the kind of progressive uh, thinking that must come out of this. We, we must see our simple people rising from this industry, yeah. making something from it. But I, I want to. Uh, yeah, yeah go, go ahead, go ahead, Genson. If, if I, if I misread what the brother is saying there, um, one of the and, and I love how he said we must be progressive. We need progressive governments. We need progressive thinking. Our governments in the Caribbean are regressive. Let me show you. The brother just made the point, and and it was a point I wanted to make earlier. Look. In St. Vincent, right, you, we are just, we are happy to, to, to oh, we just sent a hundred pounds of, of marijuana to, to, to wherever. That is, that is peanuts. That is peanuts to what can leave here. That is peanuts to what we can really make here. But you see, we have some governments in the region, Junior, sad to say that we have governments who do not want our people to progress. Because if our people get to that point, of economic stability, of, of, of being economically um, um, independent, then they won't be able to control them the way they do. And that is one of the major problems. Now, the brother just spoke. You see me personally, Junior? You see, anytime I go overseas and so forth, even though I'm overseas, I look to, for things that made in Grenada, made in St. Vincent, made in St. Lucia, made in Barbados. You know why? I feel proud. We need, again, education for the people to enact that kind of pride in them. Where, look, you, do you realize, Junior, that in, in our small island states, our people seldom want to buy something that is locally made because we think it's not good enough? We have been so brainwashed into thinking that only what comes from those international countries is the best. Listen, again, the brother spoke about marketing just now. It's how we market what we have to our locals, yeah. to the region, and internationally. Now, if you create, let's say you, you get the persons to, to take the CDB oil out, or the THC, or whatever out, and you, you, you market that as, you know, this is coming from paradise, from 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 an, such an exotic place and so forth. You think that is not going to sell more than the, the one that they may chemically um, take out in America or, or Canada or somewhere else? But we don't ever market what we have and we don't take pride in what we have. And there is where it starts. Again, brother, that, that, that um, party that is trying to get into office there in Grenada, I hope that they have this education thing down part where they are, that where part of the policy is educating the masses to be proud of what they create that is yeah. extremely important yeah all right hold on Kim hold on Kim one second one second we got a call on the line just jump to the camera we come to your point call it live where are you calling us from um I'm calling to contact about the um t-shirts online okay all right <laughs> somebody last week okay no problem we're live on air right now so just call us right back okay we'll talk about the t-shirts Thank you. What time? Call, we'll uh, call back at, at the top of the hour. 15 minutes after the oh, top of the, at the top of the hour. Thank no you so much. Problem. All right. Uh, people calling about T-shirt. We speak <laughs> about marijuana. <laughs> can we, go ahead. <laughs> well, we can make, remember, we can make clothing out of cannabis. So again, maybe uh, down the road, that might be something you might be uh, interested in, Junior. What do you think? Yeah, well, hey, hey. <laughs> Our business plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Junior, I, was, I, I wanted to make the point that uh, we are not strangers to educating our people on the value of local products, of eating local. Remember, during the revolutionary period, that was the mantra. It was uh, 
eat what you grow, grow what you eat. It was all about local stuff, exporting it, adding value to it too, and exporting it. So the brother is exactly on point. We need to educate. We need to empower our people. Look, you listen to some senior people, right? And it's like they're still thinking colonial. They believe that mm -hmm. this thing is bad boy. Mm -hmm. This thing will make people crazy. Mm -hmm. he, go, he go send more people to the madhouse and so on. And you sit down and you start to have a conversation with them. And then they get to realize, well, boy, they had things right close to them that was even worse than cannabis. Or, you know, in other words, what we're saying, and the brother is saying the right thing, education. Education leads to liberation. It leads to empowerment. And I think that must go hand in hand with legalization. Uh, because really and truly, Junior, I am against decriminalization. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you talk decriminalization, I would have been for it. But when it comes to 2022, you can't come and tell me about decriminalization anymore. No, 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 no. It has to be legalization. Legalization. Um, let me also I'll, say, I'll right? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was saying, I was saying, in the U.S., in, in the U.S., although in states like New York and Massachusetts, California, those states and them, it's legal. But if you smoke in a spliff in California right now, and a federal agent come on your block, you could, you in violation because it is federally not legalized in the U.S., so although it's legal in California, but a federal agent could still lock you up for smoking weed. So, so, so we have to work with the international aspect of it. In, even as it relates to immigration, I was speaking to my, law, to my immigration attorney, Johnny Winter Funday, and she was speaking to the fact that um, with, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a, a background, uh, any kind of background that you have or record on, 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 on weed or whatever, you probably would not even get your visa to come into the United States if that exactly. is on your record. And, and so a lot has to be done. Clean. We need to clean the records of our mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. and give them the opportunity to bloom and blossom. If they want to go on to greener pastures, so be it. Clean it. Not only yeah. that. And, and yeah. We have led before the Caribbean, not just Grenada. We have led before. We are starting off now as, as, as a babe, so to speak. Let's do it differently. Let's do it uniquely. Mm -hmm. Let's do it you know, mm -hmm. in a different way. We don't have to always pattern after the United States, Canada, or Europe. Yes, we can learn from the best practices. But come on, we could do it in our unique way. And that is what we are calling for, uniqueness. Our Grenadianism must come into play or St. Vincent kind of vibes uh, or Jamaica kind of vibes. We, in other words, we could do it in our own unique way. But Junior, I have to run. My program starts. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, nice. Thank, thank you so much, Kim. We appreciate your time. We mm -hmm. urge everyone to check out Kim Jones. He's over there at 8 o'clock on yes. Vision Information Network. Yes. Um, we always check it out I over there. So, Kim, after we finish here, we're going to join you over there. Appreciate it. Wonderful. All right, Kenson, so we have you for, for, for the next couple of minutes at, at the top of the hour. Yeah. Kenson, you, you, you was going to say? Yeah, I swear, I swear the brother was reading my mind. I swear the brother was reading my mind. Because, again, when you, when you mentioned what happened in California and so forth, I was going to say we have to be able to do things that um, are in play with our unique environment, with, with, with our needs. You know, they have, they have their different set of laws and rules and so forth in their country. Let us do things that will benefit our people in a positive way. You know, take the best practices and put them in play. Now, I want to say something here, Junior. When our governments are jumping up over 100 pounds of, of marijuana being sent somewhere, that is, that, is, that is what one farmer will bring for somebody to take on a boat and go somewhere. You, you see what I'm saying? And 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 when when one when a boat leave whether Saint Vincent or whatever and go to, to, to another island or country, it's hundreds of pounds. You see, now you have these you have these these places and you see who you see who just got into the marijuana game recently, Junior? 
Mm-hmm. Pfizer. Oh yes. Pfizer. Pfizer just Pfizer just bought this this company for a couple of billion dollars. You think Pfizer is going to invest these billions into marijuana, not knowing they're going to get it back? So what kind of what kind of catch up game are we playing? Why can't we try to be ahead of the curve because we were into marijuana production so long? Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I know of persons who would leave and come to the Caribbean just to smoke, just to get marijuana as they as they want to. Why why is it why is it that our marketing strategy can't even go further? Let the laws let it become legal. Add it to our tourism product. Mm-hmm. But you 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 have it again. You have it in places as the brother was saying. You 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 legislate where you can smoke, or let it be just like how you have cigarettes. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. Let people be comfortable because um tobacco is not is not something really primarily from the Caribbean, but we have it here, and we make our stuff here from it. So why is it why is it that the big companies, the big entities, the pharmaceutical companies, the governments, the big NC, um, the big the big CEOs and so forth, they must be making the millions while the small man mm-hmm. who has been suffering for it all the time cannot now benefit. Why? And why is it that our Caribbean governments keep on keep on pressing this kind of stuff on us again as the brothers of colonialism? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm interested to find out, right? What do you ask the man and them feel about that? Are you pissed off that this yeah, this is gonna I just spoke, take away the whole I spoke to I remember I met I met three Rasta brothers on the picket line some months ago. All up in last year. And we had a, a, a discussion. And these are, are a few of the real Rastas. I'm not talking about um you know those who who, who just in it for the, the show. And they were saying to me that they're really angry. But the thing is, the, the sad thing is, Junior, that most of the time you don't hear these people speaking out and really putting a voice out there for themselves. You see? Because too many of them, along with even the, the, the small marijuana farmers who have been doing this for years, allow themselves to be tricked again by the government and to be pulled in by the government, hoodwinked and sent back out there blind. So now, many of them, because they have already sided with the government with certain things, they can't talk. Because their hypocrisy will show. You see what I'm saying? So even though people like me, Adrian, and others will talk about the marijuana issue, we'll talk about the, 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 um, how, how unfair it is for, for, for the farmers, for the, the Rastafarian and so forth, but they are not speaking out and letting their voice be heard for themselves. So it sounds like if we are just sounding brass and timber, you know, while they may be in some corner somewhere hoping hoping and praying that, that when we speak, somebody might listen. But if they don't come out en masse and show, you know, hello, we need this because this is part of our religious expression. This is part of our religious culture and our constitution states that you have religious freedom and protection. So when the legislation was being passed, why is it that the government, knowing that this is enshrined in the constitution, did not put it in the legislation at the same time? It's for one po- it's, it's, it's explained by one thing. The legislations are not for the smaller man, and that's the end of it. Right. That's right. the end of it. And with big companies like Pfizer and these massive companies you're know, coming into the business now, that is just gonna that is gonna just take over the whole market. And I, I don't see mm-hmm. anybody. You know, they would now become employees of these big companies, or providers of these big that's, companies. But that's but that's but that's the point I made earlier. No, let me let me let me show you how stupid um this this entire thing in Saint Vincent is. And this marijuana issue, I was going to warn you today and tell you this is a really touchy subject for me, eh? mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. because it gets me angry. It gets me angry for real. Because here you have a Canadian company that's here. They, they were brought in, so they, they came, was to be the buyers of the marijuana. But now they have come and actually owned the, 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 um, the industry because now they have, they have, they have, they are planting and producing. And the government has stated 
through legislation that they are only obligated to buy 10% of their quota from the farmers. Think about that. Mm. Mm. So you bring them in as buyers, but now they become, in my estimation, the owners. Yeah. Because now, now, and 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 just to just to go on a tangent, here, it's the same with our fishing industry. Now they have brought in rainforest seafoods here, given them fifteen years tax free operation, give them give them a duty free concession and all of their their equipment. But the small man here, Junior, has to know. Um, pay concession on all of his equipment and the only thing the government has done is set them up to just be sellers and, 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 and so forth to, the, to, to that company so they're not making anything no they have to be if they have to sell to the company they have to sell their fish at a way lower rate than they can sell it for privately you see so with, with, with the, as you just said with Pfizer and all of these companies coming in why aren't we trying to change the game for us Mm-hmm. Why is it that the governments are not trying to change the game for us? Hello, okay, you're going to sell the send the, the, the raw marijuana to, to, to Pfizer or whoever for them to extract what they have to extract and sell it for you when we can do it here? When we can do it in the Caribbean? Why 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 is it that and this brings me to 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 um to the one the one the CSME, right? Why is it that we can't get that off the ground? Mm-hmm. For, for, for so many years and I always tell people the politicians are the problem because Junior if I go to Grenada, St. Lucia, Barbados or whatever uh, uh, somebody who knows me might say you know what boy a house is building here let me pull him in you know um, boy I have a, a, a cook shop here so I know this man could cook let me pull him in the people embrace each other the politicians keep us apart and it's mm-hmm. time for us as a people, if we move as a Caribbean black, you know, as one black, you know how powerful we can be, brother? Mm-hmm. Eh? Mm-hmm. If we move as one economic black, you know how powerful we can be, you know how, you know how um, economically charged each country can be? Because we will all be producing what we have to produce into selling and then sell it out there. Eh, adding value and so forth, but when we have to always keep on sending our our raw materials outside for it to be refined and sent back to us, for us to pay even more than what we sold it for, how does that make sense? Yeah, you're so right. It doesn't right. make any sense to me. You're so right. I mean, they, they have to look for the best interests of the small man. Otherwise, big companies are going to come take over the whole business, um, the small man who have been incarcerated for many, many years, the Rastafarians and people who have been locked up for just smoking a weed, having a weed mm-hmm. in their pocket or, or whatever, they have went through it now. A big company come and take it over now. You become the employee or you get wiped out completely because these companies have huge amount of resources, could buy up all the land, could, could basically take over the market. Mm-hmm. But the government mm-hmm. have to regulate to ensure that they, that, that, that they look out for the small man by legislation in place. I get it. Agreed. And here's Kem, and here's here's where Kim made a, a, another another perfect point. Where again, you have you have these these um governments. Okay, let me let me let me phrase this a different way. In Saint Vincent, let me speak from here. Things are signed, but I don't know which other country in the Caribbean may have a freedom of information. Um. You know, you have freedom of information, accent support in America and so on, where you can solve a freedom of information act on any government entity or any entity, and they have to, to um, public entity, and they have to bring that information out. Now, in St. Vincent, for example, things will be signed, agreements will be signed, and the people will not know what those agreements are. Right. And simply, the governments will rub shoulders with these big entities the, 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 the participants will fill their pockets while the small man suffer. So none of these things ever go towards the small man. Yeah, right. Hold on. So stick up in right there. We got a call on the next time. Call your library. Calling us from? Yes, I'm calling you from New York. Go right ahead, New York. Yeah, um, Junior, this topic this evening is, is very, very, very interesting. And, and, and so much information that the young, young men brought to the table. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg based on the information that, they, that they're bringing forward. And um, 
and I, I must applaud them on that, and I must give you um, an accolade for this for this this afternoon. And um, you know, I I do hope that that this this continue that that this is not the only program where you're going to just bring the two of them, but we're going to get persons like lawyers. Let's hear what the legal mind thinks about it. Let's hear what what government official thinks about it. Let's hear what the the plans are. Let let let's engage the the present government of. Of Grenada, let us let us also one day try to bring on um, the Prime Minister of St. Vincent because we know he's you know has certain makes certain uh, takes certain uh, on certain issues and you know we can get get it just from the heart is more than that from a here the, the, the perspective you know and um, as Ken said there is so much to be, to be derived from from the say or from 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 um, the whole legalization of, of marijuana in the in the region mm-hmm. as a whole, but if we we, we come together as, as a region as a people, whether it's a, as an island, whether it's Grenada or Saint Vincent, so much could be ripped out of it in terms of benefit. And if it's not taken in, in a strategical way, we can lose that. Um, the part where he said that the Canadian came into to Saint Vincent, I'm a bit I'm a bit taken aback. And knowing Ralph, definitely, I, I don't want to want to really jump the gun, but we know who he is. Kenson and them would know, know who he has. Southern people don't like him politically, but um, trust me, he, he's not blind. And, and um, who have eyes to hear with him, who have eyes to see, will see mm-hmm. time to come. And, and let's hope that the people of St. Vincent will be in charge of, of the running of the, the industry. The cannabis industry has a lot. You have people setting up things as, um, as bar for teas and, and um, different things, you know, uh, medicinal purposes. They make soap from 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 um from marijuana. Yes. Um, you hear Kim talk about it. The clothing is made from it. You have so much different thing to be derived from it. So if we the C C D B products and everything comes out of that, so we know definitely there's a lot of healing um elements from 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 marijuana. So I just wanted the, to make sure that the, the the governments of the region approach this thing in a strategic way that they know when they get into it. It's going to be not every and any because so much of something is so much of one thing is, is not good for right. Them. It's like it's flooding, it's flooding the market, uh, and that's another yes, thing that, that we could speak about as well. Flooding the market, and then have price falling, and then you have the United States coming and tell you, okay, you know what, you have so much different issues, so we cannot lend you money and whatever. It is. There's implications as well, right? And, and um, we have to look at that and make sure it's done in a balanced way. I know a lot of people are happy that is going to be legalized or decriminalized. And um, mention was made about the amount, the amount of persons that was in jail, Kenson, and, and for this reason, you know, some people who end up in jail were, were basically hardcore criminals, apart from just them mm-hmm. selling mm-hmm. Um, kilos of, of marijuana yeah. or, or sometimes cocaine. So sometimes they have to serve the time. It's just to teach them a lesson and, and deter them from the practice of what they have been doing. And, and you know, it's hard to say, some people would have lost even like a, a, a household, an income provider, right. family, as a father or a mother or, or some sibling. But at the same time, um, we know laws are there to, to keep people in place and so on. So some people are very just, just bad for the society, so they have to be locked away. Yes. I don't have a problem saying it plainly that they, they should be locked away. But the persons who get caught with a little stick or two stick of marijuana on the block, the police, who, who try to take advantage of them should really try to, 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 to you know, make a case on their behalf or right. should visit their records and try to get them. Expunge their record. Thank you so much, Colin. I appreciate yes, your, your point of view on this. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Kenson, the, the, I see that there's so much benefits for the legalization of marijuana, and I am for it. Mm-hmm. I, am, I am for it. I, I say that if it's going to bring economical benefits to the country if it's going to mean that they would have more revenues to do things um then that's great that that is millions of dollars if you look at canada um i was reading that data on canada um where, where is my canada canada information they say that canada hall um cannabis taxes with 32 million dollars within a short space of what, six months 32 million dollars i mean is that a huge surplus of it but think about 32 million dollars or 32 a million US dollars in the hands of of us and Vince Mark Grenada on a six months basis. Think about how much economical benefit that could derive from that from the country. So I am all for it. 
but they have to be properly regulated. They have to be properly mm -hmm. educated the population. And it, it just have to be, you have to be, have to, a lot have to go into it. A lot of thought process, it's not just come in today and just set up and say you, you're legalizing it. So there's a lot that has to be done. You were saying? Well, if I may say, Julia, if I may say, and, and let me say, well, three things. And what you just said there, right? We have been exposed to marijuana production and all of that for too long for this legislation not to be something. All of these governments, um, those that are present and those that have gone, the politicians that are here know what those from yesterday. So it, this, this marijuana issue is not something new. It's not, it's, not, it's not that we don't know it. Maybe the, the, ex, the, the, um, the exportation of it legally, maybe, so, maybe in its infancy. But other than that, Legislation for our local, um, for for our for legislating the the, the local um aspect of it that should be easy. Yeah. Now, the the brother the brother was speaking just now on the um the caller, where he said you know there are some hardened criminals who were you know um jailed and so forth uh, because of marijuana and so forth. But this is my thing. Whether you a hardened criminal or not, and a lot of these people got their first um, record through marijuana, and then they, they went on from there to become hardened criminals, because trust me, our prison system, that is a whole other story again, is not set up, I think in the Caribbean, especially, for rehabilitation or anything like that, we just keep on breeding criminals. When you put, the more people go to prison, most of them, if they don't try to keep their head on, there's really nothing there to not push you further into the criminal life. But I, I brought that up to say that at the end of the day, the, the person, if you were given a marijuana conviction, let us deal with that. Not if you are a thief or you are an assassin or whatever. Let us deal with the marijuana aspect of it. Because now, and this is going to put me into the third part of what I want to talk about. When you look at the amount of things for years that we are hearing marijuana can be used for, um, in the in the health aspect of it. As a matter of fact, Dunia, I think you might have drink weed too, same like me. Because and for the medicinal aspect of it, you might you might yeah. you might boil some marijuana root, you might boil so you know, for the and, and it's a hope that, that all of us have ingested at some point. And it has it has aided us with so many things. You know, asthma, um, stomach issues, things that they are now finding out in America that they are now putting out there. Saying that 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 um marijuana, they are they are actually producing stuff from marijuana for stomach issues. Now they are telling you that it's good for 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 um against against um um COVID and so forth. So with all of these things out there, Junior, this is why I said earlier we need our governments need a rebranding of what they're going to do. Let us know, take the horse by the the, the reins and not by the and not by the back foot. Let us take the house by the reins and lead it. Because now we have this opportunity. What, what is so hard for them to come and say, okay, sorry, we're going to do those, those stupid marijuana laws. Let us squash them. And now let us, let us get the economic um, effect from it that we are able to get. Instead of allowing those major companies to take the lead, they're gone in the front. And as you said, we are going, only going to do what sell to them. Eh? We are only going to be their employees. So why yeah. not go in front? Why not take the charge? Hmm? I, I, I saw an article, I saw hey, article that, that, that said, uh, in fact, it just popped up on my feed, that says Amazon endorses GOP bill that would legalize marijuana on a federal level. I think what has to be focused on is that federal mandate that marijuana mm -hmm. is an illegal substance. Mm -hmm. Because even individual states, individual states could make laws to say it's legal, but federally, an FBI agent could still pick you up. It, it means that in federal, in, in, in terms of, of how, of, of, of the, in, in Grenada, it could be legal in Grenada, but you can't, of course, you can't travel, you can't. Can't go across state borders with it. You can't go into the you come into the US with other states because it's not regulated and legalized in every mm -hmm. single state. So they have to so that particular article what says that Amazon endorses legalization of marijuana on a federal level is the 
focus what big companies should be or what should be the focus right now the federal mandate that federal mandate important and that need to change and it might take a long time who knows if the federal if the feds would ever um uh legal marijuana all right but I that was what uh, i don't think it will take years you know? mm -hmm. let me tell you why i don't think it will take years when you have and i think you are missing one of the most important aspect of what you just said there when you have a company like Amazon wanting to get these mandates out, this federal mandate out, it tells you one thing. It speaks one single thing, economics. They yeah. see the potential in making so much money in getting this going across state, um, state boundaries, even internationally, that you could, you could come and order your marijuana from them. They are only seeing economics, so why is it that we in the Caribbean, Junior, our governments and support can't see with the same eye? Why? Yeah. And do you do you have you have you ever read the history of why marijuana and hemp were made illegal? It's a really good read. It's it's too much for me to go into here on your program, but it's a really good read. And people will understand and get to realize that it had nothing to do with health or anything like that. It was all economics. Mm -hmm. and, and just to give them a piece of it, hemp can be, hemp can make plastic that is, that is way cleaner and, and, and biodegradable than what they're making from, from, um, from, 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 from um, petroleum, right? Hemp, hemp can make metal. A form of, you can make planes and, 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 and automobiles from, from, from hemp. Right? That is way better. You can make the oil from hemp that can run these automobiles and planes. Hemp can build houses. Mm -hmm. Hemp can, can, can create, as the brother told you a while ago, clothing. Hemp can create paper. You know, marijuana and all of them. Say, because, and then that is why they were, they were, um, they were, they were ostracized and, and, and so forth. And made illegal because they threatened the economics of the big, the big people. I'm not going to call them the elites, as people call them. It threatened the economics of the big one. That is all. But yeah. now these are the same people who are coming into the back door and trying to take take control of it for their own economic freedom mm -hmm. and for just for economic purposes. So why are we not racing along with them? For that same for 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 that same purpose, economics, plain yeah. and simple. Yeah, listen, Ken, um, Ken, so we're going to leave it right there, but it was a, a great discussion. Part one, uh, I'm, I'm assuring you guys that we'll have more conversation as it relates to marijuana legalization, uh, what you take on the criminalization and the whole process, because that is where um, I think the, the countries of the Caribbean need right now to increase on the GDP. And, and uh, I mean, if they don't do it right now, somebody's going to do it and take over what, what, what they have. Uh, and we've seen that is making huge economical benefits for places like uh, Canada and, and states like Massachusetts and California, New York. So hopefully they get on board and they get on board quick. Last words, Kenson, before we wrap up. Let me just say thanks again, Junior, for having me on. Um, and I, I do hope that, that what we have spoken here, persons get, you know, some education and insight into what is happening. And... Um, you know, I just, I just really do hope that at some point, Junior, we become a people who are more proactive economically, um, legislatively, and so on, and stop, have, stop following, you know, other international countries and so on. Let us do things that are beneficial for us and to us, you know, right. and I hope at some point we do get governments that see the benefit in empowering our people instead of others. Thank you again, brother. Thank you so much, my brother. We'll keep in touch. And Kessa, where, where could people uh, where, where could people find you? Oh, um, you can you can go on Facebook and follow Kenson King. Um, my face is there, so they won't have they they won't um they won't be misled. And every Sunday at eight, I have a program called the Rant Control Chaos, where I deal with matters both you know more locally, but Sometimes I deal regionally and internationally, so they can find me there also. Absolutely, absolutely. And we, we're going to place a link to your uh, Facebook 
page on the description in this particular show so you could find Kenson over there. Thank you so much, my brother. We'll keep in touch. Thank you again, brother. All right. Bless. All right. Yeah, that was brother Kenson King from St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Kim Jones joining us to talk about uh, the conversation. That's part one. And I rest, rest assured, guys, there'll be more conversation on marijuana. Um, next week, we're planning to have um, uh, some politician weigh in on this very important subject matter. And of course, if you have any questions, that you want to throw at them. Well, when you put up the poll, you guys, you guys, you guys would, would, would know and you could come in with all your questions and comments as it relates to marijuana. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for being a part of our program today. I was saying earlier that, um, so we have some money that we receive from, from Jack, right? Jack Russell. He was on the program and um, he wanted to make a donation to the program and I promised him that his donation would go towards uh, kids. And he, he actually said he would like it to go towards kids. So we're going to do just that. So the funds that Jack sent us that came in the mail today, um, we are going to put, we're going to double it. And we're going to um, get on families, mothers, and kids who really need the assistance uh, we're going to be submitting um, them, or we're going to be donating to them at least $250 in groceries that they could pick up. And that's for folks in Grenada, Carrico, and Pity Martinique for now. Um, on Jack's letter, Jack wrote a very short letter, but it said a lot. Um, Matthew 2540. And he signed. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Thank you, um, Russell, Jack Russell, for that donation. And we're going to make sure that it goes to a, exactly where it needs to go in the hands of the family who really needs this assistance. Now, if you know someone, and I hate to do this because we get five, 600 people who submitted names, uh, but we could only do about five, right? But we're going to look for the people that are really, really in need and donate these $250 worth of groceries to these mothers uh, with young children who needs that assistance right now. We know a lot of people are going through a lot. People are, are I mean, I can't tell you how much times I had to call my producer, Lynn, and say, Lynn, we have to do this. Most of the times, we take these funds out of our own pockets and send it off to people, all right? So when we get assistance like this, I, I love it because it, it helps out help us out and it helps out help out the family so if you know someone who needs that assistance guys just just inbox us everybody won't be able to get i tell you this in this first round everybody is not going to be able to get but even if we help five people even if five kids were able to go to sleep tonight with something in their stomach we will feel blessed and probably somebody else is going to come on board and give us some more assistance financially, and we could do a whole lot more. There's some 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 angel probably watching right now. We say, you know what, Junior? On top of the 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 the, the, the doubling that you do, I want, I'm going to triple it. Probably somebody going to come on board and say, you know what? I'm putting five thousand, and then we could do 20, 30, 40 families. Right? That's how we go sometimes. Yeah, it, it, it starts with, with with an effort. So our effort is to help out people because people are going through a lot. And thanks to Jack. Thanks to you guys that ride along. No, when you watch the program, hey how hey how you guys help out this, this this venture. When you watch the program, and from time to time you might see uh, an ad pop up or something like that. You might see you know an ad from Facebook pop up. That's Facebook monetizing the program. Don't get mad and upset when you see the ad. In fact, see it as a way of your contribution because every ad that pops up on the program. That's Facebook paying us to do what we're doing, right? And we try to, that's why we're able to build studios and, and come here every day and, you know, facilitate everyone who needs to be here in order to make this thing work. So when you see an ad pop up, say, that's my contribution. Every time you share the program, that is your contribution. Every time you put it on somebody else's page, you put this program on a group, that is your contribution, right? Every time you invite a friend, that is your contribution, and, and that's how we're able to do what we do. So don't get mad. Don't get upset. Say thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you, Marlene, Ezra, and everybody else for watching and supporting us here on the Ride Along Live. Oh, I have to tell you guys about this. The t-shirts, the t-shirts. Uh, I know a lot, let me tell you, a lot of people ordered these t-shirts. A lot of people ordered these t-shirts. Uh, their t-shirts, their hoodies, their polo shirts. And I'm wearing mine right now because I'm all in the, you know, ready for Grenada independence. In fact, it don't only come for Grenada independence right with my national colors, right? So this is going to be available all year round. Independence, no independence, every time it's going to be available on the site. So we urge everyone to go and order a shirt, right? This is for Grenada independence. What we're going to have for St. Vincent, we're going to have for Trinidad, we're going to have for, Saint, for, for Jamaica, we have for every single country. But for now, Grenada independence is on the 7th. Go and support it. Now, some of you might order today or tomorrow, and it might come after independence. It don't matter. You're still supporting and you're still showing off your national colors. You see this one? Look, you know, watch everybody see you. You got your, your, your coat of arms. You got your flag. You got, let me, let me stand up. Let me show you. You got the whole, you know? Yeah. Representing. And these are, these are in hoodies, uh, polos, uh, T-shirts, this is a button-up shirt I'm wearing today. Tomorrow I'll wear another one so you guys could see. So go on order right now. The link is riderslive.com slash Grenada48. Go on there and order, order, order. Even if it's after independence, wear your national colors and support, support. When you do that, you support us and we're able to continue to do what we do here on the ride. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Thanks for supporting uh, thanks for being a part of our program. Catch you guys again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Do you feel sick? Are you unsure? Or need to travel? But can't afford the long, exhausting lines? Then you need to be tested for COVID-19. Here at All Pro Health Lab, you can schedule your appointment online. No wait, no lines, no hassle. And get your results back in 30 minutes or less. Call now to find out more. 516-828-1800. Oy. Our agents are always ready to help. Hear why everyone is talking about All Pro Lab. It's quick, efficient, and tests are guaranteed in 30 minutes or less with full certification. Check us out online at allprolab.com or call 516 828 1808. All Pro Health Lab. Call today. William's Funeral Service serve you with dignity and compassion as you mourn. Every day, we embark on the journey of life, and one day, the journey will end. It's on that day that you can entrust the celebration of life of your loved ones to David Williams Funeral Service. Call 718-291-3823. Hello there. Let me introduce you to the Nutmeg Band. Playing in the background is the latest release. Take me to a party. Take me to a party. This music is now available on leading online stores. So please, pick up your copy today and tell all your friends about it. Get your copy now. Right along, so it's happening, it's happening here. Came over here. What does it mean? You know, I, I grew up in a what I guess you call it, it's about family. We break all the stories, and that's just of the fact. And that's why everyone has a story to tell. Right along, live. I mean, yeah, yeah it's, it's a real deal. deal.